The long jump has been a staple at the Olympics since 1896. In fact, if we go back to ancient Olympia, the Greeks would have been competing in an event that looks eerily similar to the long jump. But the most sacred of things when it comes to the long jump in particular is accurate measurement. 891, the longest jump in history. Oh my goodness, 8 meters 95. That is history in the making. That's a world record by five centimeters. That was massive. Now, check this out. 855. And the headlines have been written by the woman who never, ever fails to deliver. Let's take a look at the long jump at the World Indoor Championships in Belgrade this year. If you're a fan of the long jump, so far nothing out of the ordinary is happening. But what is this device flashing red and green? It's the signal to let us know if the jump will be measured. Green we measure, red we don't, and it's considered a takeoff fault. Why is this device significant, you may ask? It's the first time World Athletics, the governing body for track and field, decided to replace the use of plasticine to determine takeoff faults. Moving away from plasticine really means that we no longer need a judge to signal through the waving of a flag if the jump was a good attempt. Another job lost to automation. It's always good to replace jobs. So what's the big deal? Track and field is littered with technological advancement. From cinder to synthetic tracks, sophisticated photo finishing, electronic timing, to how we measure distance, and now how we identify takeoff faults. Both current and former athletes were confused about the rollout of this new technology. Carl Lewis, one of the greatest athletes of all time, had this to say. Here is a tweet from British athlete Shara Proctor, reacting to what seems like a legal jump, expressing bewilderment at it being called a foul. Measurement has come a long way, from the use of regular tapes, fiberglass tapes to steel tapes, and now to the use of electronic measuring devices. EDM uses a laser beam to measure distance. It uses the time of flight principle by sending a laser pulse towards the spikes held by the official in the sandpit and measures the time it takes to reflect off that object. You see it a lot with land surveyors. Perhaps the most famous limitation of electronic measuring systems occurred at the 1968 Olympics when Bob Beeman jumped 8 meters 90 to obliterate the world record by 55 centimeters. They had to bring out the measuring tape because Beeman's jump was further than the electronic system could measure. EDM enjoyed a long stint measuring the jumps at major games. But in 2011, World Athletics, then IWF, embraced technological innovation and replaced EDM with VDM, Video Distance Measuring. VDM uses calibrated stereophonic cameras that identify exact landing points in the sun. These cameras are positioned in the spectator stands and are capable to capture athletes landing in the pit at 2000 frames per second. The accuracy and speed of measurement is outstanding. We no longer have to be concerned with the judges disturbing the sand in the landing area. Researchers have found that the human eye can process an image seen for only 13 milliseconds. That's 75 frames per second. Anything faster and your brain is unable to register those frames. To put this in perspective, most video cameras can capture between 30 and 60 frames per second to allow for smoother motion. The cameras used by Seiko, Omega and other companies can capture up to 2000 detail images per second. When these images are stitched together, it creates a motion much more accurate than the television broadcast cameras. So if we go back to Proctor's tweet, the image he's seen is from the television cameras and not from the VDM cameras. But remember, the television cameras are unable to capture as many frames per second as the VDM camera. What the VDM camera is capable of doing is to create so many detailed images that we are able to see 
every point of action the jumper makes. Television cameras are just not capable of doing that. What Shara is seeing and what we're seeing on television is just not accurate. Now let's get back to Carl. Carl Lewis might be right if he's actually saying that the level of accuracy that World Athletics is trying to achieve makes the sport less fun for athletes and spectators. And it begs the question, what level of accuracy do we need? Let me know your thoughts on the use of the VDM system to determine takeoff faults. On this channel, I provide sports explainers. You might be interested to know why the pen relays track at Frankenfield has a weird metal barrier on the edge of lane 4. Click this video to find out why.